welcome to This is Nigeria, Unlocking Her Potentials. Now this is the program where we analyze the investment and development potentials of our great country, Nigeria. And today the spotlight is on Nasarawa State. My name is Mayowa Oluwabi. Don't go away. We'll be back. Nasarawa State has been designated as the home of solid minerals. You will not begin to imagine the extent of this mineral deposit in just one state in Nigeria. That is how hugely endowed this country is. The special highlight today is on that state. It covers the agriculture, tourism, and the huge mineral deposits in that state. Enjoy it. Nasarawa State was created on October 1st, 1996 from the old Plateau State. The state is located in the political middle belt of Nigeria and is accessible through Benue State to the south, Kogi State to the west, the federal capital territory Abuja to the northwest, Kaduna and Plateau States to the northeast and Taraba State to the southeast. Nasarawa State, with a land mass of 27,118 square kilometers, is located in the savannah belt of Nigeria. It has a climate typical of the tropical zone. The state's population stands at about 2.5 million people. The Nasarawa State government has stepped up the Back to Farm program as a means to recourse agricultural production as a major source of employment generation and wealth creation for the people. The government and people have realized the need to take special interest in the rediscovery of the inestimable fortunes waiting to be harnessed in agriculture. Almakura's administration accorded premium attention to agriculture on assumption of office in May 2011 and has continued to do so. Farming remains the highest employer of labor with over 75% of the state's population engaged in farming activities. The administration keyed into the Growth Enhancement Support Scheme GES, of the federal government, otherwise known as the Wallet System, aimed at subsidizing farm inputs distribution as a strategy to reduce cost of production. In Nasara State, the present administration has its own vision, and the vision is to have food in abundance before it's populous. The state is faced with a population explosion from Abuja being the gateway. And uh, I will not mention what to, to, to tell you that we are feeding the better part of Abuja. Because if you go right from Massacre up to Lafayette, you find yams all over, you find foodstuffs all over. And so that poses a challenge for this government and the government is up to take it. Agriculture is a part of life of people in Nasarawa State. Nasarawa State is, the acronym is State of Solid Minerals. And we add with agriculture. Solid Minerals and Agriculture. Because about 70, over 70% 70 of our people are engaged in agricultural production or one sort of agricultural activity or the other. Either you are involved in the production or processing and marketing. And so, uh, if 70% of our people are involved in agriculture, can be rightly say that the state is an agrarian state. So we want the private partnership arrangement that will sustain the industries that this government is trying to come up with. Nasarawa State has been appropriately tagged as Nigeria's home of solid minerals. The state is one of the most naturally endowed states in Nigeria in terms of availability of economically and commercially viable natural resources. Indeed, each of the 13 local government areas in the state is uniquely blessed with one form of solid mineral deposit or the other, which can be exploited and sold in local or international markets. We are so endowed with minerals that you can uh, you know, just mention that we have them all here in this natural state. And we are asking investors to come in here and invest with us and help us exploit these mineral resources for the good of the people, for the nation. We, we as a government are out just to create an enabling environment, uh, providing incentives for, 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 for investors to come in here. Uh, like the PPP uh, uh, program that we have in place, 
we have a PPP office here that is to liaise with our investors in collaboration with the Ministry of Commerce okay. uh, to, to, to guide investors who are willing to come in here with their money to exploit our mineral resources. Natural Investments and uh, Property, De Property Development Company Limited uh, is wholly, wholly, uh, wholly uh, owned by the Nasrallah State Government. Uh, we are supposed to work out with work with the private se sector individuals and organizations to bring investment inflow into the state. We will do advise the state government on on uh, a, a investment profile and then uh, work again with um, the state minister and parasitas to uh, advise them on technical issues that has to do with. Uh, investment execution. We have in potential a lot of minerals, as localized now as home of solid minerals. And as long as the land has a potential and it's not tapped, we can have the dividends of it. And so I think it became necessary that there should be a systematic way of exploiting these minerals or in a working way of looking at partnership and private partnership coming into the state in collaboration with government to tap these resources for human use. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Nigeria, unlocking her potentials. Today, we also spoke to the executive governor of Nasara State, Alhaji Tango Almakura, the only CPC governor in Nigeria. And if you know what that means, in Nigeria's political landscape, that is no mean feat. Enjoy it. Nassau State is designated as a home of solid minerals. Can you justify this question? Can you explain why this is so? Nassau State is eminently deserving of that name as the home of solid minerals. Uh, the reason being, of all the states of the country, after a seismic data survey, it was discovered that Nassau State is the only state has, that has the largest quantum of solid mineral deposits within its vicinity. Uh, hence, we are called the home of solid minerals. What are you doing to bring local and foreign investors to exploit, to explore, and develop your state? For the benefit of your people. I have decided to reincarnate uh, what used to be the Solid Mineral Development Company. At the moment, we are packaging it and making sure that it becomes functional. We have already employed a general manager and we want to use it exclusively as the vehicle for interfacing both with the federal government in terms of statutory requirements and all necessary due diligence with regard to exploitation. At the same time, liaise with foreign investors and experts who are conversant with the processes of exploitation and uh, management of such resources. We have even gone ahead to have certain other collaboration with special uh, agencies that would complement some of this policy framework 
that the state has put forward to make sure that we should justify our position as the home of solid mineral by getting the greatest value for our natural resources. When we look at the variety of solid minerals that we have and look at the difficulty in the exploitation of these solid minerals, uh, we resorted to having some discussion with Naseni so that together we will be able to uh, domesticate the kind of equipment, machines, that are needed to exploit some of these solid minerals because some of the machines are so sophisticated and so difficult to come by. Our collaboration with Naseni will afford us the opportunity of manufacturing tools and machines that are dedicated to the processing in a simple technology, all the different kinds of solid minerals that we have. And after that point, we can then uh, take it to the next level where the experts can use more sophisticated uh, machines to refine or fine tune the minerals to their desired uh, quality or diversity. I also noticed that your, your agricultural sector is a very vibrant sector that you can also utilize for the development of your state. What are you doing about that? We are very, very lucky to have a land that is conducive, not only conducive, naturally fertile. And the land, one can say safely, that is a versatile land that could be used to cultivate all kinds of crops that could be cultivated within the savannah region. We have already had some understanding or collaboration with an international conglomerate, uh, conglomerate uh, a company called Olam. It's a Singaporean company. And it has now been given over 20,000 hectares in Nassau for cultivation. At the moment, it has cultivated about uh, 2,000 hectares of rice. Our intention and target is for Nassau State, in collaboration with Olam, to be the largest rice farm, not only in Nigeria, but in Africa. This company has uh, concerns in different parts of Africa and the world, and uh, they have in Zimbabwe, they have in Uganda, but the rice farm they are having in Lafia now, in Nasarawa now, will be about the largest rice farm in the next five years. Well, what are the incentives for prospective investors in the solid minerals and agriculture and also tourism? From our analysis and study, uh, we discovered that the state is attracting a lot of investors across the globe. We as a state have made a policy now to reduce difficulties investors are having with regard to certain statutory requirements. So the state government is setting up a PPP agency where all investors who come and are pursuing any kind of investment, such outfit will be able to reduce the difficulties they are having. Not only that, the state is also making efforts to see how we can give tax holidays and all kinds of incentives that will encourage investors to uh, partake in their businesses without any delay. So that you have immense tourism potentials. What are you doing to finance this potential for the benefit of the people? The state has quite a few tourism potentials. Take, for instance, the Farerua waterfall, is one of the greatest waterfalls we have in the country. It has a depth of about, uh, I think, 150 meters. And if you look at that depth, it's even deeper 
than Victoria Falls. So we are looking for investors that will come and establish a hospitality industry that will be adjacent with the fall. And not only that, within that area, there are species of very special birds that could be a tourism attraction. We have a variety of over 50 different kind of birds that are peculiar only to that fall. And it appears there is something tick for the birds in the, in the, in the, in the, in the fall, that wherever you go within the state, you don't see those kind of birds except uh, in that fall. So these are some of the attractions. And we have tried the best we could uh, since we came in to publicize this. Uh, so I'm using this opportunity to call for investors who are interested in the hospitality industry with particular reference to tourism to come and meet with us. We can take them around the state and they can see uh, what they could. on this program is a panel of discussion. As we always do on this program, we bring you an analysis of the subject or the state in focus. So today in the studio I have with me very seasoned professionals and one of the representatives of Nassau State Government to analyze this huge mineral deposits in Nassau State. Why they have them, what the plans are to expose them to foreign and indigenous investors. Don't worry. To discuss further with me today on the state in focus, Nasarawa State, the home of solid minerals, is the director of industries and mineral resources, Elijah Bubaka Mohammed. You're welcome to the program. Thank you. And seated next to him is to is Mr. Ben Bright, an investment consultant. You're welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. How much minerals does Nasarawa State have? Nasarawa State has uh, quite a good number of uh, minerals, ranging up to 24 out of the 34 basic ones that we have in Nigeria. Okay. Uh, even though there are still other that are beneath the surface, that has not yet been discovered. We're making effort to ensure that those numbers are discovered to add to what we have in the state. Okay. So how many local governments do you have in Nasarawa State? Uh, we have 13 local governments in Nasarawa State. So you have... In every local government, I'm sure there's a minerals deposit. Exactly. In every of the local government, you have one or two of those minerals deposited in their environment. Okay. And uh, the state government has actually been able to identify where these minerals are. Okay. But other efforts are being made to ensure that we put our grounds on our, our pre the preparations towards ensuring that the investors come into partnering with the state government. Okay. And going further to what we want to do with the minerals that are deposited. So there's a lot of private partnership or private sector participation. Really, really. it is uh, in that particular focus that the government, the present government of the day, of His Excellency Elijah Moritan Kwan Makura, uh, that he was able to now come up with the Office of the Private Private Partnership, that's the PPP, to enable investors have a one-stop shop for discussion as to which of the areas they will want to partake with the state government. Uh, several discussions have been made with some investors and uh, effort is being put in place in which the state government will now collaborate either with the private investors, being the foreign or local. There has uh, been some constraint in the solid mineral sector that the federal government has exclusive rights. For some yeah. of the states are now navigating their way into private partnership or private sector driven exploration of their mineral resources. What is your assessment of this development? I would say um, what is happening or about to happen in uh, Nasrawa State is a welcome development. Okay. Uh, you know why? Because in most of the 36 states are scrambling for one commodity called oil. 
And if we can have this kind of uh, quantity of uh, non-oil product, it therefore means that the issue of uh, uh, job creation will just be history as far as Nasrawa State is concerned. But it's not just enough to have those things lying on uh, in the ground or unexploited. Yes. You, we need to exploit them. We need to harness the uh, potentials, the benefits accrue from the solid mineral, okay. and the fact that it will attract the private sector investors is another plus for them. Okay. But the issue is, how well are you equipped? Are you prepared? open up for the private uh, investors to come in. Is it just uh, like we have banks in virtually in all the states, but the question will be what is the banks doing? Uh, what are they supporting? What is the percentage of their support to the real sector? Okay. Or are they just there to uh, house and protect the government allocation from mm -hmm. What I'm saying here is that it is a good thing. Now we have, a, the sector has come into being but we now want it to compete. I know there is no way you compete with government because government is the largest spender of money. Yes. Yes. But at least we'll so what's your industrial policy? Exactly. Well, the, 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 the industrial policy we have in place is we have a three-year tax-free holiday for our investors and uh, the acquisition of CFOs for the various industrial line title okay. uh, is being fast-tracked within the shortest period of time. Um, or like before when it like took before, years. Yes, particularly with the, with, the, with the establishment of the NAGIS, that is the Nasera uh, Geographical Information System, okay. which His Excellency has given so much kudos to uh, in place. It's, it is a really uh, a system where you have the acquisition of these CFOs okay. obtained as soon as uh, possible, okay. rather than the previous uh, procedure. Okay. that you will have to wait for a long period of time before you get the CO4 for a particular industrial land that you intend to invest on. Okay. Like we always say on this program, the voice of the people is the voice of God. So we have the opinion poll segment coming to showcase what the people of Nasarawa state feel about the developments that is going on in that state. And it's very interesting. Stay tuned. We pray for somebody like Almakura to come. And today is here. So we want to pray for God to give him more time and opportunity to exhibit uh, this uh, kind of project, not only in Lafayette, but all over the state. We are very, very grateful because since 1999, we have never ever seen this development. This is the right time that we have been seeing it. And we are grateful with this government. Why? Because this development even when we are not alive, our children will very, very benefit. Yeah, it's good for sell and they sell food here, and they, and they do well here. Here, this in Asawa set is very, very good. Based on what is going on, I think the government is really trying for us. We have road networks, we have street lights, we have traffic lights. We have a lot of schools going on, construction, both primary and secondary schools. Even the universities, we have both federal and state universities. Almakura is trying, is trying a lot. Because compared to the past, there is a lot of changes in the state. A time of road network, electricity, water, education, health, security is trying. Well, this is where we draw the curtains today. Every good road has an end, and it's been a pleasure presenting to you the great potentials that is located in Nasarawa State. We wish the people of Nasarawa State the best of luck as they unlock the huge potentials in their states for the benefit of the people. Now, like I always said, Nigeria is richly blessed. 
we invite foreign and indigenous investors to look into various states in Nigeria. We're all blessed all over, agriculturally, tourism, and solid minerals. Well, that's where we wrap the curtains today. My name is Mayowa Uluwabi. Thank you for watching. And join me next week to unlock another state in Nigeria. Good night.